I think there's a lot of things that make our school somewhat distinct from other film schools. Um, our curriculum is somewhat similar. It's very hands-on. Um, what's slightly different about um, our school is the community that we serve. We're extraordinarily diverse. Uh, more than half the students are people of color. And we're part of CUNY and part of Brooklyn College, so our tuition is literally a third of other film schools. I think the most exceptional thing about Fierstein are the students. Everyone here, where we come from, a lot of us are international students. A lot of people commute from far distances, and once we get in this building, you're kind of looking at the future of the film industry. Our school is situated on the lot of Steiner Studios, which is one of the biggest lots and places for making movies um, in the world, really, and certainly the biggest in New York. I think it's a really big benefit to have school here at Steiner Studios. Uh, we kind of get this type of experience that not a lot of other film schools and students get to have. I mean, who gets to say every day, oh yeah, I go to a film lot for my education every single day, and it's just a normal part of your routine, and we kind of get used to it, but it's definitely something we never take for granted. Started off trying to figure out what film school I wanted to go to, of course, all the schools in California, a couple in Texas, couldn't really afford it, and when I found out about Fierstein, it became the only school I wanted to go to. It wasn't just my first choice, it was the only choice. We have a variety of ways that we bring the industry to Fierstein and bring Fierstein to the industry. So each of the individual instructors frequently bring industry members to the class. What I try to do is to bring um, industry members to the school in general and do seminars for everyone. We brought all the filmmakers behind Queen's Gambit, the writer, director, producer, cinematographer, editor, composer. And they gave a seminar and we watched some episodes of that show just as it was coming out. Um, we had Gus Van Zandt, who's a wonderful filmmaker, come and speak with all the students. It wasn't until after Good Will Hunting that that same idea, when pitched to Casey Silver, who thought I was crazy, all of a sudden that idea had merit. You know, they thought it was a great idea because Good Will Hunting was making money. So they thought, Van Sant can make money, let him do Psycho. And then it didn't make money. But if it wasn't successful, it would have gotten the studios busy remaking frame by frame other movies, which might have been a nightmare. Reggie Hudlin's a wonderful producer, writer, and director, and he came. Learn about Cuban uh, movies in the, in the 60s and 70s. Learn about you know, Fellini, learn about everything, right? And still without shame. And eventually, as you are telling stories that mean something to you, you will see styles and techniques from other filmmakers and you will adapt them to your own purpose, right? That was the first seminar that I attended. I remember I left out of work early just so I could see it. Uh, I grew up watching quite a few things that he did, but most recently with the DC comics, um, and like the static shock uh, era that's going on. He kind of talked about it a little bit and I'm a huge comic book fan. So I definitely want to take a lot of comic books and just short stories and adapt them into full movies. So I really got to benefit by seeing him here on campus. It's about bringing these filmmakers, music makers, media makers to just talk about their art and their craft and demystify it for everyone. This is attainable, they're just like you, they're just a few years ahead and this is where you want to go, so might as well ask them some questions and find out how they got there. <laughs>